All right, so there's a small parking area here at the Vivian Creek Trailhead. And the trail is just past the sign here. And we're actually going to go up an old road to start. And there's this little connector right from the parking area. We're just going to take this onto the road and follow the road up along Mill Creek, which is the massive creek off to the left. Now, there's private property on either side here. There's cabins and there's some... Um, like water tanks and stuff like that. We're just gonna stay straight on this road and keep going up and you'll see the private properties marked off pretty well and there's signs pointing you uh, in the right direction as a hiker. But the sign you're gonna really look for is this one right here. And this is where we're gonna cross over Mill Creek over to the left. This is the important one. If you don't take this, you're not gonna hit the summit. We're just going to go right across the washed out creek here. Now you can see the trail um, is pretty well defined in here. I'd say it probably shifts a little bit every year uh, once this floods. And if it's raining and flooding, it's going to be, um, you know, not crossable. But we're going to go across that point where I just pointed to over there. That's where the trail continues. And then we're going to climb up um, that little ridge over there to start our journey. And once you get to their side, you'll see there is a sign that says trail. It's not too hard to spot. It can be hard sometimes earlier in the season. There's trail. And here's another sign telling you that in one mile, when we get to the San Gorgonio Wilderness, we're going to need a permit to hike in there. And if you go to the guide on hikingguide.com, I have all of the permit information. I'm not going to go through that here. But the first mile or so up to that sign is probably the hardest on the whole hike. It's really, really steep and it's a, a pretty massive wake up call for your legs. You're going to just go up, up, up and there's a couple switchbacks and they don't really make it easier, but there are some flatter sections like this where you can get nice views over across uh, to the other side of Mill Creek. The high peak on this little part there is called Little San Gorgonio on the other side of Mill Creek. We're going to keep going up, and after about a mile of climbing, you're going to come to the border of the San Gorgonio Wilderness. Now, if you don't have a permit, you're not supposed to hike past here, and you can see it tells you that there. But thankfully, you're going to get a break, and the next section is going to be pretty cruisy. It's not going to be nearly as steep as it was before. At this junction, that's Vivian Creek Camp. Up on the right, we're going to go left up towards the summit. And you're going to follow the banks of Vivian Creek up here. And sometimes there's water late in the summer. Sometimes there isn't. There's a little log bridge here. But it's really scenic, mellow um, hiking at this point. And it's a great way to kind of catch your breath after that initial climb that's, that's really, really hard. Uh, it's going to get steep again towards the end. But that's definitely one of the most... Uh, steep sections that we just did. You can see as we hike up here, there's tons of old cedars and beautiful, beautiful forest um, that we can go up here. And it is uphill. If you look at the elevation profile, it looks like the same as the rest of it, but it definitely doesn't feel as steep as the rest of it. And you can see there's some meadows that we go through. It's really a um, nice scenic part of the hike. Now, the next landmark we're going to come to is the turnoff for Halfway Camp, which is down there. These are all primitive camps, as you'd probably imagine, um, just flat areas where you can camp and overnight. And that's not halfway to the summit. That's halfway, I think, to High Creek Camp. But after that, we're going to start climbing up a little bit. And it's not super steep. You can see there's switchbacks here as we go up. It's a pretty um, gradual uphill climb here. You can see some more switchbacks. If you do want to camp, um, you can do this as a two or three day or whatever hike here in the wilderness. And you need a permit for that. And if you look at the map on uh, my guide on the website, I'll show you where the camps are as well as some of the smaller dispersed camps uh, and campsites where you can set up a tent. At one point, you're going to come around to the south face here and you're going to be able to get some nice views across to Little San Gorgonio across Mill Creek where we started. Also Galena Peak is the high one that's a little bit farther up as we go along here, but really, really beautiful views. Here's one of those dispersed sites that I mentioned before. It's enough for one or two tents, but not a whole lot more. 
but you can certainly camp there as well, as long as you have a permit to camp here. Better to camp in a spot like that than to clear a new spot and uh, damage some more wilderness. Now we're gonna kind of loop around into the canyon where High Creek is and get nice views back across Mill Creek, which is back over there and down. You'll probably be able to hear High Creek at this point, unless it's late summer and it's dry, but we're gonna wind around here. And at this point, we're almost, uh, we're almost to High Creek here as we go around and you can see it gets level and as we approach the campground um, there are some flat areas and little use trails down to the creek it says do not camp there this area is protected for wildlife it's kind of a sensitive habitat and you'll see a lot of birds and animals and insects around there but here we are at high creek camp and there's some campsites you can see them around the trail here uh, little dispersed sites and there's a sign telling you that you are at High Creek Camp. And from here, we're gonna go through the camp and then over another little feeder stream and then up, uh, I don't know how many switchbacks, at least a dozen. Here's a little feeder stream right past the camp. High Creek was dry when I shot this, but that feeder stream had water in it. Usually Vivian Creek has water. Um, there's just a couple places to get water, but otherwise we're gonna continue up these switchbacks some people have a mental problem. There's a lot of them, they're kind of long. Um, I find it pretty easy. Uh, I mean, it is uphill, so easy is relative, but you can see them winding up there. But I'd rather do these long switchbacks than go straight up the hill, which for me is a lot harder than cruising up the switchbacks. And as you go up here, you're gonna see some markers up on the trees and also notches. Those are the old trail markers. They're high like that and notched. Um, if you're hiking this in the snow, they're gonna be hopefully above the snow line. Um, and if there is snow and bad weather here, you don't wanna do this hike, especially for the first time. And I'll talk about that in the guide. After the switchbacks, you're gonna come up to this ridge and the trail goes off to the left there and you can see San Gorgonio up in the back. But there's a really neat viewpoint, which I recommend just checking out briefly over here. It's a good place to have a snack too and fuel up before the last little part of the summit. Straight ahead is San Jacinto, the other high peak across the pass there. But beautiful, beautiful views from this area. Now, in this shot, you're also going to recognize there's a bunch of burnt trees. This is from the 2020 apple fire and the fire stopped right here on this ridge line and as you hike in this little section you can go through some of the fire damage you can see some of it here you can also see where it stopped as we go up now this next little section there's san gorgonia up there this next little section is tough um, there are little switchbacks but you're basically going straight up this ridge line and uh, you're going to be at altitude here you're almost at 10,000 feet, I think, at this point, and it's a tough one. You can see how slow I'm going here as I navigate these little switchbacks to go up this steep slope right here. Just take your time, take breaks, and pace yourself to get to the summit. And after a short while of this, you're going to get a little respite here. It levels out a little bit for a while, and the trees start to thin out as we go here. This is probably the last place you can really catch your breath before we get up to that ridge right up there and then cross over to the summit. We're just gonna keep going straight and eventually the trees will disappear and you'll have gone past the tree line and it feels like you're hiking on the moonscape here as you hike up. And it's tough, it's uphill again, not quite as steep as the last section, but uh, You'll get nice views all the way back to Saddleback Mountain right there in Orange County. We're going to keep on going up on this slope here. And again, take your time. You're going to probably feel the altitude, especially if you came from sea level at this point. You can see there's another dispersed campsite here. I marked a few of them on the map again. So if you do want to camp here, check out the map. There's some ideas on where you can camp as well as official campgrounds that you can camp at as well on this trail. So we're going to continue up here and eventually you're going to get to this junction with the um, divide trail. And if you go back to the left, you're going to go along the high peaks of the San Bernardinos back that way. Be careful on the way back too. It's easy to miss that turn and kind of go straight, in which case you will not be going down Vivian Creek. 
but from here the gradient eases up a bit and we're just going to keep going straight to the last little bit towards the summit here. Here's another trail junction if you want to hike down towards um, Dollar Lake and South Fork you can go down to the right but that's not where we're going today we're going straight up to the summit on this last little stretch maybe a half a mile from this point when you climb a little hill, you're going to think it's the summit. There's a big pile of rocks on your right. It's a little false summit here. But once you get up to that pile of rocks, the next bigger pile of rocks, the biggest pile of rocks in Southern California will be directly in front of you. And that is the peak area. Now, as you go on the stretcher, you'll see a little clearing down on the bottom there. That's the official summit campground area. And it's nice and protected and it's flat. But people also camp up at the summit as well. There's little stone shelters that uh, act as windbreaks. You can see one straight ahead there. But when you get up to the summit, there's the Big Bear area, Sugarloaf Mountain off to the left. We're going to go up the rocks on the right to the actual summit summit, um, which is right here. Now, sometimes there's a sign here. This day, somebody had taken it home with them. There's a little flag marking the summit. There's a couple trail registers and there's great sweeping panoramic views from up here. There's San Jacinto straight ahead. There's the trail where we came back. There you can see the trail. And then off to the north, you're going to be able to see the whole Big Bear area and Sugarloaf Mountain. And that's it.